Hi Floss Tube. This is Stephanie, the Ivy House Crafter. <clears throat> Apparently I've got a little bit of a frog in my throat. That's okay. Um, welcome to my channel. Thanks for, for watching. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you stick around. Um, this is where I talk about my cross stitching and sometimes some of the other crafts that I do. And you know, if you've if you're a repeat offender, uh, return watcher, viewer, um, thanks for coming back. And let's jump right into it. Um, I mentioned in my video last week that I got my husband a dad joke of the day calendar. Just a 365 days of deliciously stupid dad jokes. <laughs> Not stupid, but you know, um, they're dad jokes. <laughs> so I thought, since I have a whole year's worth of dad jokes um, available to me, why not just start each video with the dad joke of the day? So buckle up. Why was the cat afraid of the tree? Because of its bark. <laughs> yeah, so that's over with. <laughs> um, I hope everybody had a great new year. Um, we celebrated ours in our traditional manner. Um, we have a couple recipes that we make every year and um, this is something that um, I've been doing, or my family has been doing since I was a teenager. Um, one is called Traveling Tacos. It's actually a seven layer dip, but um, when we received the recipe, we'd never heard of seven layer dip and it came labeled as Traveling Tacos. So that's what we call it. Um, and it's a layer of refried beans mixed with salsa, and then a layer of guacamole, and a layer of sour cream. And um, since I'm mostly plant-based, I make my own sour cream using cashews. It sounds bizarre, but it tastes pretty good. It, it's not exactly the same, but it's a good substitute. And then a layer of, let's see what came next, cheese. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we skip the cheese. Um, sometimes I'm like, well, it is New Year's. Let's celebrate and just put a little real cheese on. And sometimes we use um, like a, a plant-based cheese. It's good either way. And then there's olives and tomatoes and lettuce. And you eat it with tortilla chips and it's just delicious. And the other is hearty cheese dip, which is another one that we've had to <laughs> significantly alter since my years as a teenager. Um, back then, it um, and like the rest of my family still now, they make it with Velveeta and ground beef. And then there's also like salsa and olives. Um, or is it rotel and all? In, anyway, salsa or rotel, something like that. And we make a um, nacho cheese dip out of, again, it sounds bizarre, but out of potatoes and carrots <laughs> and some cashews and um, some other ingredients. And it's actually really yummy. So. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we make that and then, um, let's see, this year we added some morning star crumbles. So it's, just, yeah, a, a gluten-based meat substitute. I know, I, I know how I sound. It's okay. I'm okay with being the weird person that eats the weird food. Um, anyway, so... It was really yummy. We all really liked it. Um, so that's our traditional New Year's dinner. And then, let's see, we watched The Greatest Showman, and that was a lot of fun. And now I'm obsessed with all of the music from The Greatest Showman. Really amazing music. <laughs> and let's see, put the kids to bed. We told the older kids that they could stay up if they want. My oldest didn't. She, she likes to have a, a bit of a consistent bedtime and she gets really out of sorts if she stays up too late. So she went ahead and went to bed. 
Um, Thomas, my 11 year old, he made it to midnight and apparently he's not like me. When I get really tired, I get super quiet. Um, and he, <laughs> he's one of those that when he gets really tired, he gets super not quiet. <laughs> so he was like running around and way more energy than I have even when at my most energetic and, but yeah, so we stayed up and then listened to the fireworks out the window and then everybody went to bed. I spent most of my evening cross-stitching and that was a really nice way to ring in the new year. And, um, and that's about as exciting as it gets at our house at New Year's. Um, we've had years where we didn't know it was midnight and, and the new year until um, we heard all the fireworks and they, they woke us up because we had already gone to bed. And we're like, oh, <sighs> stupid fireworks people. Happy New Year. <sighs> you know, <laughs> we're not really party animals. But yeah, we had a good, a good time in our own quiet, healthy way. <laughs> uh, let's see. You might remember from my last video, if you watched it, that I was not wearing my glasses. Um, that may not be the kind of thing they pay any attention to, and if not, that's fine, whatever. Um, I decided to try out some contacts. Um, I haven't worn contacts in years, um, but I did have an extra pair, and I thought that I would give it a go because I've had these glasses um, since before I gained all my weight, and um, they're made for a head that is this wide, and when I put them on, they have to stretch out to this wide. See the difference? And, um, and it puts a lot of pressure on the sides of my head. And so I've been lately ending up with a bit of a headache every single evening. And I was just getting really tired of it. So I decided to try out my contacts. My left eye is fine with contacts. And apparently my right eye is not and like it would just get really dry it would get really irritated um, painful at times the first time I wore contacts when I first got them when I was like 19 18 I don't know um, somewhere around there um, the, the right contact that they gave me had a, a microscopic like tear or crack or something right on the contact and um, being very new to contacts I didn't realize that, that the pain and irritation I was feeling for the first like hour was the contact damaging my eye. <laughs> so um, you know, after a while I, I brought it up I'm like you know this eye kind of still hurts and so they took a look at it, they found the crack, they gave me a, a replacement to, to wear until they could replace it with the, the official, you know, the real one with my real prescription and, and correction for the astigmatism. Um, but the damage was done and um, this eye has a kind of minuscule amount of scar tissue from that. and. I think that's the reason that I stopped wearing contacts in the first place. And that was the reason that I had to stop wearing them again. <laughs> Cause I tried, I tried so hard for like a week. I tried to be a contacts wearer and it just didn't work out. So I'm back to my headache inducing glasses until I can make an appointment and get, I'm due for a new prescription, a new pair of glasses anyway. Um, the problem is, if I get new glasses, I would get them to fit my head as it is now, but one of my New Year's 
I hesitate to call it goal or resolution because I don't know how committed I am. <laughs> but one of my New Year's, I'd really like this to happen, is losing weight, in which case my head would shrink and the glasses would end up too big. It's really frustrating and a bit disheartening that in order to be able to see, which is a pretty big deal, I have to resort to measures that are at best an inconvenience and at worst painful. Kind of sucks, but I'll live with it, you know, <laughs> it's, it is what it is. So that was my however many minutes too long of talking about why I wore contacts last week and glasses this week. <laughs> Um, the next thing in my notes is dealing with major depression and I have been meaning to at least mention it in my videos for quite a while and then I never do because I like to try to at least pretend to be okay. And the truth is that I'm not. I think I'm, I'm just going to end it there because I don't want to cry on, on my video. So, you never know what someone is going through. Um, even when people act like everything is fine, sometimes it's just not. So, Always, like this is kind of a, a paraphrase of a quote I recently read. Um, if you treat everyone you meet as if they're dealing with something incredibly difficult, more than half the time you will be right. Um, so treat people kindly and be understanding and be patient and just love the people around you. Okay, time to put my happy face back on. <laughs> okay, um, I have a couple finishes that I want to show. Let's get into the, the crafty and cross-stitchy part of the program. <clears throat> I finished this um, actually a few weeks ago and just kept forgetting to show it. My son Thomas has been requesting a th that I knit him a hat. Or did I show this last week? I don't remember if I showed this or not. I know I intended to. Anyway, I'm going to go on and assume that I haven't shown it yet. Uh, my son was requesting I knit him a hat, so I knit him a hat. <laughs> it's just a simple, super simple knit hat, um, the same pattern that I've knit several other hats out of, and he really likes it. It matches his coat. It's a good color on him. So yeah, very simple knit hat. And now my six-year-old wants one, so I'll have to break out the, excuse me, the, the circular knitting needles again and make a new hat. Let's see. I have a cross-stitch finish. It's an FFO. And you can't see it because it is the Biscornu for the Great Biscornu Swap. Um, this will be sent out to my swap partner today. And um, she was actually intending to send mine to me today, so they'll kind of cross paths. And um, so each of us should have a beautiful new Biscornu by the, or um, yeah, sometime this week. I'm really excited about it. It it turned out just super cute. I did film a little snippet um, where I show it in very pretty detail and I will um, insert that into next week's video after I have ensured that my swap partner has received it. 
very handy to have a fireplace right, right next to me where I can just stack everything. Let's see. I showed in my previous video a new pattern that I had bought. Um, I have a printout of it, but the colors are off, so I'll just show it on the, um, on the screen. This is Active Service by Purple Stitching on Etsy, and I will link this below. I think it's just beautiful, and I stitched on it for like four days, I think, and made some really neat progress. Ta-da! It's bigger than that. This is this is how big it's gonna be. But um, I started. It, it's it's a mostly full coverage, but like a an amorphously shaped full coverage, so it doesn't go from corner to corner. Um, so I started in the middle instead of having to try to to measure out and figure out you know how to start in the in the corner. Obviously I have been working on her face. My daughter Audrey thinks that she is creepy because she doesn't have eyes. <laughs> but I think she is just turning out so beautiful. I am really pleased with how this is turning out. Let me fold it up again. And yeah for the first four days that I was working on her, I was like obsessed. I was stitching on her all the time. And then I was like, okay, I need to put this away at least for a little while so that I can have, you know, more than just one project to show on my floss tube video. So I put her away, but I will be getting her back out again, like almost immediately because I love it so much and it's just so beautiful. Um, that being said, I did want more than just one project to show. So, thanks to you guys, I started Forever and Ever, and this is um, number one of the Songbirds Garden series by Cottage Garden Samplings, featuring the Northern Cardinal and the Christmas Rose. I started up in this corner working on this flower and its surrounding leaves. And this is my progress. I have the first leaf completely done. That was the first part that I did. And I've got two colors done in this flower, as well as one of the colors from these two leaves here. This part was fun to work on, this, this center part right here. That's gonna turn out really pretty. Um, I'm not stitching this on the called for linen. It called for tin roof from Weeks Dye Works, 36 count. Um, this is 36 count Edinburgh linen in Tycho, T-Y-C-H-O, from Picture This Plus. Um, I doubt that I will be doing any of these on the actual called for linen. I might or might not. Basically, I'm just kind of like purchasing um, like fat quarters of 36 count linen here and there and some of them are already dyed a pretty color. Some of them are in white and I plan on um, practicing dyeing myself and I'll just kind of mix and match and whatever linen I think will look best on whatever pattern or whichever pattern I think would go good with whatever I create, you know. So I doubt that I'll be using the called for linens. Um, also, I am not using the, the Weeks Dye Works colors. I'm using the DMC conversion. So, um, yeah, I think it's turning out really pretty. And I, d I don't mind the, the lack of variegation. So yeah, this is one over one on 36 count. It's, it's really like, it's smooth because um, since it's just one over one, or not one over one, one over two on 36 count, um, 
so it's not like bumpy. I don't mind bumpy, but this is fun to, it's fun to pet. <laughs> so that was Forever and Ever by Cottage Garden Samplings. Okay, the last thing that I wanted to show, um, if you follow me on Instagram, um, I'm at Ivy House Crafter, all one word. Um, you will have seen that I've been working on some project bags. Um, have been working on is a term to be taken very loosely when it comes to me and project bags, apparently. I'm not very consistent with like working on them and getting them done. And that's another thing that I, um, my, my New Year's, this kind of needs to happen stuff um, is getting more consistent and, you know, really working on making project bags. And I have a very specific reason for that. And I will be talking about that once I have some finished project bags to talk about. <laughs> but I do have the um, sort of the, the front panel, the part that goes below the zipper on the front, um, finished for eight bags. And I thought that I would show that because it's been fun putting them together and pairing fabrics and um, crochet trim. All of them are, um, are going to have hand crochet trim that I make. So, so here's my farmhouse. But see, it's just, just the front. Um, but yeah, the zipper and then another panel of fabric will go here and there will of course be lining and backing and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I've got some cows and pigs and there's a, a rooster and, and this pretty trim that I crocheted. And this really cute bird fabric. I do like birds, so there will probably be lots of birds. Not all of them, you know, not, not so many in this pile, but I do have so many fabrics that I'm planning on making bags with, and, and birds show up in a lot. <laughs> so there's really cute colorful birds, and a scalloped um, crochet lace. have this bright blue and white damask with the pink and white polka dot and the pink lace. Very pretty. This one is fun. Um, this fabric was a skirt that somebody gave to me and it didn't fit me and it didn't fit any of the or either of my girls and um, but I just really liked the pattern so I I held on to it for longer than you should hold on to a you know an item of clothing that doesn't fit anybody in the house and nobody will ever wear but <laughs> but I just I really liked the fabric and I knew that someday I was gonna find a use for it and I did and it's gonna be this really awesome project bag This one is really cute. With this, I did the lace on the upper panel instead of attaching it down here because um, I tried a few different of these um, lace things and they, they kept covering the fox. And I didn't want to cover that row of foxes because they're super cute. So I, I made a lace that had um, a flat bottom and a flat top and sewed it on onto this part instead of down here so that you could see the foxes because they're really cute. There's foxes and hedgehogs and little baby deer and what are those? Owls? From the back they kind of look penguin-like but I think they're owls. Um, that goes more with the woodland theme. 
And look, the deer's like looking at this cute little butterfly. And yeah, really cute. All right. This one was fun. Sort of like retro mod patterns. Um, and it didn't want a lacy trim. It wanted something a little bit more retro mod. I don't know. I don't know how to describe this, but this this particular trim, it's still hand crocheted, but it just it suits much better than a, a frilly, lacy, scallopy edging or trim would have. So this one is a lot of fun. Just a couple more. Here's another bird fabric, birds and flowers. I really like this this type of fabric. So when I find some that's like this, you know, the the bird and flower all mixed together, I I tend to get some of that. Um, and it's got these pretty leaves on top. All right, last one. This is fun, huh? Gingerbread cookies, um, cat hair, sorry about that, um, cookie cutters, and baskets of cookies, and measuring spoons, and this can be hot cocoa, or if coffee is your preferred beverage, you can think of it as coffee. For me, it's hot cocoa. Gingerbread and hot cocoa. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's a really cute one. And that is all that I have to show. I hope to have, I don't know, at least one of those project bags completed by next week. We'll see. No, this is not all that I have. Um, so last week in my video, I mentioned that I was um, passing this stash on Country Cottage Needleworks Welcome Home. And I had four people ask for that. And it is going to Magnolia Nana. That's a fun name. So um, I'm gonna leave a comment on your comment, or leave a reply on your comment. And um, if you could get me your address, then I can send this to you. So. That is all that I have. Um, have a wonderful stitching week, everybody. Remember to be kind. And yeah, happy stitching. Bye.